Howdy folks, welcome to Brain Rotters. Today we'll be talking about all the easter eggs and references in the Suicide Squad official trailer. The trailer brings us in with Seely Dan's dirty work. In the opening scene, the flowers on the dash in the van are the same flowers in Harley Quinn's character poster. We're introduced to Bloodsport. Bloodsport is a mercenary whose name is Robert Dubois. He can manifest weaponry in his gauntlets that we see in the trailer. Think of him as a less OP version of Deadshot. Peacemaker, aka Christopher Smith from the comics, he is a person, a psycho, who will fight for anything and everything if it means peace and liberty. Captain Boomerang, Amanda Waller, Rick Flagg are amongst the only returning characters from the first movie. The flag in the background it suggests that this is Corto Maltese, a small island off the coast of South America. Rick Flagg's shirt translates to obstacles are opportunities. This is a metaphor for the entire film, the entire Suicide Squad as a whole. I think more or less as the movie as a whole, because the obstacles in this movie are opportunities for a ton of action. Harley's costume in her file is paying homage to the Batman the Animated Series where she first debuted in that costume. Rick Flagg's muscle tattoo says Squad, spelled S-K-W-A-D. In this case, I think it means he's fully embraced being part of the team, part of Argus, part of the process. We're introduced to Savant. He is a former vigilante, proficient torturer. Uh, however, he is current in blackmail. So, uh, in Gunn's movie, he also seems like he has high, high, high reflexes. After we're introduced to Pete Davidson's Black Guard, we are introduced to Weasel. Weasel is, of course, played by Gunn's brother, James Gunn, the director. His brother, Sean Gunn, who actually did the motion capture and the green screen for Rocket Raccoon in the Marvel movies. Back to Weasel, he is a bloodlustful villain. Now, Weasel actually ended up killing Thinker in the comics, or was actually the cause of the death of the Thinker. The Thinker, of course, being in this film, we can assume maybe this is foreshadowing that. Next to Weasel is a number 7661. If you plug this into Google, a Suicide Squad comic will pop up where Captain Boomerang joins the Suicide Squad. Now, this is safe to say that it is foreshadowing the ragtag crew that Captain Boomerang is leading with Rick Flagg is going to die in the opening of the film, and Captain Boomerang will go on to join the main squad. A number on the wall that reads EC20 refers to Suicide Squad number 20, where a vengeful Harley Quinn after losing her crush, Joker, after breaking up with Joker, essentially, goes on a vengeful killing spree. And if you know from Birds of Prey, uh, we know that she emancipated from Joker, meaning she left Joker completely. This could explain why in the trailer Harley went all rogue and the team had to go and rescue her from whatever she's been up to. But clearly she went on a spree, judging by that blood on her face. On that truck that Savant gets out of, there's a number 12 at the side of it. Suicide Squad number 12, a comic, is titled, Who Killed Amanda Waller? Could this be foreshadowing that the movie will kill off Waller? Speaking of the ragtag crew, let's introduce some more to you. Mongol, of course, has energy projection and super strength. TDK, the detachable kid, he can rip off his arms and beat people with it. And Javelin throws javelins. In this film, we meet King Shark, who, opposed to his comic book counterpart self, is not a hammerhead, but a great white shark. I mean, there was a Flash comic that followed him as a great white and many comics out there. However, his normal look would be a hammerhead. We get our look at Polka Dot Man, Mr. Polka Dot Man, who can, in fact, manifest weapons and utilities from his polka dots. This is Solsaria. The Task Force X is an ally to her. She allies with them. The Spiraling Chopper is uh, full of those villains from that monitor, the ragtag crew, if you will. So this is likely where they all die and Captain Boomerang and Rick Flag walk away unscathed. And last but not least, we are introduced to Starro. Of course, Starro was the first villain the Justice League ever fought. Essentially, what he does is he conquers worlds by enslaving people. I uh, kind of like putting face huggers on their face and just hoping for the best. Howdy, folks. If you like this, please subscribe, like, comment down below. If I missed anything, please let me know. Uh, it's okay. Thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a happy Saturday and uh, take care.